Congratulations on your purchase of one of the finest lawn or garden tractors made. You may have purchased your tractor already assembled and ready to mow, or you may have elected to perform some basic assembly yourself. Those simple assembly instructions can be found in your tractor manual. You should complete them before watching this video. While the tractors shown in this program may differ slightly in appearance or feature content from the one you purchased, the basic operating systems and procedures are the same. This video will talk about safety. It'll show you some of the basic operating features of your tractor, some simple maintenance procedures you can follow to extend the life of your tractor, and it will answer some of the most common questions new owners have. While we design every lawn and garden tractor with safety first and foremost, the operators of these machines must also keep safety first and foremost in their minds. Because every year, serious injuries result from the careless or improper operation of lawn and garden equipment. Injuries from contact with hot mufflers and exhaust systems. Contact with sharp mower blades. From objects thrown by those blades. Injuries from being run over or backed over from carrying passengers, from improper operation on slopes, and from collisions with other objects. These are the most frequent ways that consumers get hurt using lawn and garden tractors. We want your experience with our products to be an enjoyable, injury-free one. So we'll discuss safety throughout this program. That's why we made this video, to help you learn to use your tractor the way it was meant to be used, the safe way. One of the most important rules of safe operation is that adults should be the only operators of a machine this powerful. And every adult that operates this product should do so wearing the proper attire, from safety glasses to good sturdy footwear. Also, every adult that plans on using this product should read the manual. This video is designed to familiarize you with the product. It's not designed to replace the manual. Should you ever sell your tractor, be sure you give the owner's manual and video to the new owner. Now, let's get to know some of the basic features. First of all, your tractor seat is adjustable. Before you operate your tractor, you should adjust the seat so that you can comfortably reach all the controls and fully depress any pedals. If you have to stretch too far forward, you may unintentionally actuate the operator present system and shut off the engine. Check the fastening bolt and the adjustment bolt. Both bolts must be in place and tightened. The dash is laid out for convenience and comfort. The ignition switch is similar to that on an automobile, with one important exception. Turning it to this position will turn on the headlights. Some models feature headlights that work only when the engine is running. The attachment lift lever raises and lowers the mower deck. You must depress the button before the lever will move. Some models feature a six position height adjustment. This lets you position the mower deck directly to one of six cutting heights. Other models feature a dial-in height adjustment. This convenient feature lets you adjust cutting height infinitely between the highest and lowest settings. The attachment lift lever on these models simply lowers the mower deck to your predetermined height, which is convenient if you cut at the same height every time. The clutch brake pedal serves two purposes. It always acts as a brake, but on gear-driven models, it also acts as a clutch that must be fully depressed to stop the tractor while changing gears. Some models combine the throttle and choke into one lever. Others provide for separate control of the throttle and choke. Some models use a lever to engage the mower deck drive belts. And some feature an electric clutch operated by a PTO switch on the dash. Your tractor may feature a manual or gear drive transmission, or it may feature an automatic or hydrostatic transmission. Models with an automatic transmission use the motion control lever to move forward and backward and to stop the tractor. We'll show you how that works out in the yard. Tractors with an automatic drive transmission will have a freewheel control that will let you push the mower when the engine's not running. This control must be all the way in or disengaged for the transmission to work properly. 
If it's not in the correct position, the tractor won't move under its own power. If you've purchased a garden tractor with a manual extra heavy duty transaxle, you'll find it has a high low range lever. This lever provides extra pulling and pushing power in low gear for certain gardening and tilling projects. Just remember, your tractor won't move at all if this lever is set to neutral. Now that you're familiar with your tractor, let's take a look at the area you're going to cut. Before every grass cutting project, you should inspect the area to be cut. The first thing you should check is the grass. Is it wet or dry? You won't get the quality of cut you expect when the grass is wet. It'll clump up while mulching or plug up a bagger. If it's wet, wait till it dries out. The best time to cut is between midday and sunset. Pick up all the toys, any branches or large twigs, rocks or pebbles, anything that could be thrown by the spinning blades. Your tractor's blades spin very fast, nearly 200 miles per hour, and can pick up and throw objects out from under the mower deck. And for that reason, there should never be anyone in the area when you're mowing especially children. It's safest if the kids and pets stay inside. You should also never carry passengers of any age with you on the tractor or on any of the available attachments. Following this simple rule will help you avoid potential tragedy. Finally, check out your trees and trim any low-hanging branches. You don't want any unexpected surprises. Before every mowing job, you should make a few basic safety and maintenance checks on your tractor. You should check the oil level before each cut. Just like a car engine, you can prolong the life of your tractor engine by keeping it filled with clean oil. The oil level should be between these two lines. The proper oil weight and viscosity is listed in your manual. Follow the regular maintenance schedule in your manual. Of course, check the gas before you start. Like your car, this tractor uses regular unleaded gas. No high test. Your engine won't run any better with high test. It'll actually run hotter. You should always use fresh gas, no more than 30 days old, in an approved gasoline container. You can extend the life of your gas to 60 days by adding the recommended amount of fuel stabilizer when you buy it. And be sure you store it and your tractor away from any open flames, like that from a water heater or a furnace in your garage. You should move your tractor outside to add gas, but you should never add gas while the engine's running. Be extremely careful when the engine's hot. In fact, you should actually let it cool for a few minutes if it's been running. Of course, you should wipe up any spills, and if you spill any on yourself, change clothes before you continue. Gasoline is highly combustible and can erupt into flames if a source of ignition is nearby. Check the tire pressure before each cut. Proper even tire pressure is important to getting a nice even cut. Checking the pressure before the first cut is very important because the tires are shipped overinflated. You must reduce the tire pressure to the proper level for the mower to give a quality cut. Getting the tire pressure right is actually the first step toward adjusting your mower deck. To get a nice level cut, make sure the mower deck is properly adjusted. Start by checking it side to side. With the mower raised to its highest position, measure from the bottom edge of the mower housing to a level paved surface. There should be no more than a quarter inch difference between the two sides. There should be a difference from front to back. To achieve the best quality cut, the front of the housing should be lower than the rear, between one eighth and one half inch lower than the rear, but no more than a half inch lower. Your manual shows you how to make these adjustments. While you're down there, make sure the drive belt and mower belts are routed properly around their pulleys and inside the belt keepers. 
you'll find routing diagrams on the mower deck and under the left footpad. Okay, that does it for the basic checks and maintenance. Now that we're familiar with our tractor, let's start it up and cut some grass. The first rule of starting your tractor is to not start it if you've taken any kind of prescription drugs that could impair your judgment or reduce your reaction time. Obviously, the same goes for alcohol. The second rule is to always start your tractor in an open, well-ventilated area. Also, for safety reasons, your tractor won't start if you haven't set the parking brake and disengaged the cutting blades. To set the parking brake, depress the clutch brake pedal and lift up on the parking brake lever. Release the clutch brake pedal and the parking brake lever will stay in the locked position. The parking brake is now set. Some models feature an electric clutch switch that should be pushed in to disengage the blades. Other models use a lever that should also be in the disengaged position. Either way, the tractor will not start if the mower is engaged. Place the motion control lever or the gear shift in neutral. Now set the choke. On models with a one-piece throttle and choke lever, push it up to the maximum throttle, then move it up to full choke. On models with a separate throttle and choke, move the throttle all the way up and pull the choke all the way out. Turn the ignition and the engine should start after a few cranks. It's common for a small puff of blue smoke to come out of the exhaust when it first starts up. After the engine runs for just a few seconds, push the choke in, reduce the throttle to half, and let the engine warm up for a few minutes. While the engine runs smoothly within a few seconds of when you start it, it's important to let it warm up for a few minutes so it can provide full horsepower when you engage the mowing blades and start cutting. The first thing you should do after it warms up is test the brakes. Then test the operator present system. This safety system will shut the tractor down at any time either the mower or the drive system is engaged and you leave the seat. To test it, make sure the transmission is in neutral, release the clutch brake pedal, and raise up off the seat, keeping both feet firmly planted on the footpads. The engine should die. Now set the parking brake, reduce the throttle to half, engage the mower blades, and raise up off the seat. Again, the engine should die. Reducing the throttle before engaging the blades will prolong the life of the belts. The blades are now engaged and the mower is mowing. Remember, don't step down off the unit while performing the operator presence control system check. You should never attempt to leave the protection of the operator's position while the unit is running and the blades are engaged. And always keep your hands away from the discharge when the engine is running. You may hear a small squeak as the belts engage the pulleys. That's normal and no cause for concern. Once you've engaged the blades, push the throttle to pull. You can now lower the mowing deck to the desired cutting height. If you've purchased a garden tractor with a heavy-duty transaxle, remember to engage either the high or low range setting. If your tractor has an automatic transmission, when you're ready to mow, just move the motion control lever forward. And when you're ready to stop, just ease it back into the neutral position. You can also use the brake pedal to stop. And in an emergency, it may prove to be quicker. But if you try to use it as a means to start moving, your starts may be jerky. Before cutting for the first time, you should practice operating your tractor in an open area free of obstacles until you're comfortable with its operation and all of its features. Some models feature gear drive transmissions. Those models do have a clutch that's controlled by the brake pedal. To engage any gear, you must fully depress the clutch brake pedal and, after stopping, select a gear. Then, slowly release the pedal. The most desirable ground speed for mowing may vary each time you mow. It will vary based upon the height and thickness of the grass, the dryness, and even the type of grass. Of course, all these factors are affected by the time of day and time of year. Simply put, 
you may be able to move faster on some days than on others but you should never travel at an unsafe speed if you experience a poor quality of cut reduce your speed until you find the quality of cut acceptable but remember there's only one correct engine or throttle speed that's full the engine should be run at full throttle to provide the fastest mower blade rotation that gives the best cut you should never reduce the throttle to adjust the ground speed of the tractor. Running at a low throttle speed reduces the quality of cut and the charging output for the battery and also makes the engine run hotter. Make all the adjustments to the ground speed by changing gears on models with manual transaxles or adjusting the motion control lever on tractors with an automatic. To stop the tractor, either depress the clutch brake pedal or with automatic transmissions, move the motion control lever to the neutral position. Then, depress the brake pedal and engage the parking brake. Don't forget to stop the blades. To stop the blades, reduce the throttle to half and disengage the mower. Turn the ignition key to the off position and remove the key from the ignition switch before leaving the tractor unattended. Always wait for the blades to stop spinning before getting off the tractor. Following these starting and stopping procedures will reduce belt problems and any after-fire noises when shutting off the engine. Following a few basic safety guidelines will help provide years of safe operation. While operating your tractor, always stay alert. Be on the lookout for holes, ruts, or bumps. If you need to get off the tractor to move an object, Remember to disengage the mower blades and set the parking brake, or the operator presence system will shut the tractor off. Always get off like this, on the trim side. Never get off this way, because you're placing your feet right next to spinning mower blades. Always go slowly around blind corners, never know what's waiting for you. Stop immediately if you hit something. Shut down the tractor, remove the spark plug wires, and inspect the mower deck and blades for any damage. The discharge cover on the right side must always be on the tractor and in position during operation, but it will keep you from getting close enough to trim. So you should trim with the left side of the mower deck. Always execute extreme caution when backing up, and always disengage the mower blades unless you specifically intend to mow in reverse. Remember, this tractor was designed to allow for the blades to turn in both forward and reverse gears. Always look where you are driving the tractor. If you should shift into reverse, turn and look behind and down prior to actually operating the unit in reverse gear. Keep a close lookout for children. You should always use caution on hills and even on slight inclines. Your tractor weighs hundreds of pounds and you don't want to tip it over. And all you need to do to avoid tipping is to use good judgment. And use the 15 degree grade guide that came with your owner's manual to help determine if a slope is safe. Cut this guide along the dotted line. Line the left edge up with something that's vertically straight. This angle is 15 degrees. From it, you can get a good idea if any slopes in your yard are greater than 15 degrees. If they are, don't mow them with this or any brand of home, lawn, or garden writing mower. But it's also important that, regardless of the angle, you never attempt to mow any slope that you can't back up without slipping. Any slope should command caution, and you should follow a few basic guidelines when mowing them. First, Always use a slow gear on a hill, and always mow straight up and down a hill, never sideways. Likewise, never try to turn on a hill, especially when going down a hill, and never shift out of gear and coast down a hill. By keeping the tractor in gear, you stay in control and can brake more effectively. Pay particular attention when pulling accessories. Only pull approved attachments and avoid pulling them on hills and limit loads to those you can safely control. 
Never carry passengers on any part of your tractor or on any attachment. Depending on the model and options you purchased, you can either disperse, mulch, or bag your clippings. Some tractors come from the factory ready to mulch. Some require optional mulching kits, and some are not designed for either mulching or bagging. Many consumers prefer to mulch their clippings because it recycles the nutrients back into the soil. Mulching is a process of cutting and recutting the clipping several times. This requires special mulching blades that are designed to create a vacuum and pull clippings up off the ground and back into the cutting path of the blades, creating tiny clippings that decompose quickly. To achieve the most effective mulching, you should cut no more than one-third of the grass height at one time. Mulching is most effective with dry grass. Wet grass is too heavy to correctly circulate through the cutting paths and will result in clumps of cut grass and a poor quality of cut. Also, the mower deck should be clean underneath to allow for proper clipping circulation. You may also choose to bag your clippings with the optional grass bagger attachment. Again, the grass should be dry to allow for the correct airflow and movement into the bags. It's normal for the left-hand bag to fill first. As the bags fill, the full bag indicator spins, slowly at first, and then, when the containers become full, the indicator spins very fast. This is when you should empty the containers. If you continue to mow until the indicator stops spinning, the bagger chute will fill with the excess clippings, and you'll need to shut down the mower, remove the key, and remove the spark plug wires. Then clean the chute out. There are a few simple maintenance procedures you should perform after each cut. Taking these simple steps will prolong the life of your tractor and improve its performance. Each time you're finished mowing, you should blow off the top of the mower deck. Grass clippings that collect around the pulleys will block airflow into the deck, disrupting mulching and bagging. You may need to pull them out by hand if they've become excessive. You shouldn't spray the mower deck with a hose before first removing the clippings. The water spray will actually force the clippings further into the guards at the base of the mower mandrel, making the problem worse. Occasionally, as clippings build up under the mower deck, You'll need to remove it and clean it. Be sure you remove the key and spark plug wires first. This will eliminate any chance of the tractor accidentally being started while you're working on it. Be extra careful anytime you're working around the mower blades. They don't have to be turning to cut you. Spray off any loose clippings or scrape off any thick built-up residue. This will restore the proper airflow characteristics. Your owner's manual includes instructions for removing your mower deck. If your tractor won't start, check the following possible causes before calling for service. Are you depressing the clutch brake pedal? Your tractor won't start unless you do. Have you disengaged the attachment clutch lever? or move the attachment clutch PTO switch to the off position. The mower must be disengaged for the engine to start. Check the gas. Is there plenty in the tank? Check the air filter. Is it dirty? Clean or replace as necessary. Do you have a weak or dead battery? Recharge or replace as necessary. Does the engine appear to lack power? Check the choke. If it's partially engaged, disengage it. Check the air filter. Clean it or replace it if dirty. The engine may appear to lack power when actually you're simply going too fast for the height of the grass you're trying to cut. Try mowing at a slower ground speed or raising the mower deck so you're cutting less grass. Experiencing an uneven cut. There are several possible causes of an uneven cut. 
Check the grass. If it's weighted down with dew or moisture, you're not likely to get acceptable results. You may have the throttle set too low. You should always cut with the throttle set at the fastest position for full engine speed. Is the tire pressure even and at the proper level on all four tires? Is the mower deck properly adjusted, front to back and side to side? Your owner's manual shows you how to adjust the mower deck. It's important to note that the gauge wheels are designed to protect the mower and the lawn at high spots in your yard. The gauge wheels should touch the high spots only. On the flat ground, they should not touch the ground. When properly adjusted, they'll be at least three quarters of an inch off the ground with the mower in the mowing position. Are the mower deck vents plugged? If so, remove the key and spark plug wires and clean the mower vents. You may simply need to remove clippings that are built up under the mower deck. Be sure you remove the key and the spark plug wires before doing this. Are the mower blades worn or bent? Is the blade mandrel damaged? Replace if necessary. Check the mower drive belt for excessive wear. A large number of cracks is a sign that your belt may be slipping. Replace if necessary. Your bagger isn't filling? The bagger chutes may be clogged with grass clippings. Remove the key and disconnect the spark plug wire, and then check the chutes and clean them out if necessary. We have made every effort to provide you with the highest quality riding lawnmower available. We've designed it to be both safe and convenient and to provide countless hours of uninterrupted use. Just remember, your tractor will only be as safe as the person operating it. So please, read and follow all the safety rules in your manual. You can help guarantee that uninterrupted use by performing maintenance at the regularly scheduled intervals. You will also prolong your tractor's life by taking the appropriate actions to prepare it for cold weather storage. Your owner's manual has more details on that. When you have questions, refer first to the owner's manual. Should you need further assistance, call our consumer assistance hotline at 1-800-659-5917.